Well, this is the all-new 10th generation Honda Accord. It's been 40 years since the Accord arrived, and this one has a different look. Domestic? A little bit, I think, especially in the back uh, quarter panels. It looks a little bit like the Chevy Malibu. I like the front. It's got a very aggressive front end. It's got a longer hood now. In fact, they actually moved the windshield back about 10 centimeters. That's quite a bit of space to give this elongated hood, sweeping roof line, almost a fastback look. What they're trying to do with Accord is what Toyota's trying to do with Camry. They're trying to appeal to the next generation of potential Accord buyers. With a car that isn't as busy as the Toyota Camry, it has a more conventional style, yet a domestic look in my opinion. What you get with this car is standard LED low beams and halogen high beams. However, if you get this top touring, you get LED low and high beams. Around the back, you get standard LED cluster lamps. Wheel sizes range from 17 to 19 inches. The car is a little bit bigger, but not in the dimensions you might think. It's just a tad wider. The wheelbase has been lengthened. However, it's a little bit shorter and it's a little bit lower to give it that sleek silhouette. I certainly do think with these 19 inch throwing star wheels, it looks aggressive, it fills out its fenders, it looks nice and low. So you have to decide which one you think is better looking. On the inside, this car is a winner. Now because the Camry just came out, these two Japanese brands go head to head for loyalty, we have to draw some comparisons. And this product, in my opinion, where the Camry looks a little bit more avant-garde, which is really hard to say with Toyota, it's hard to believe that that's the more fashion forward design. This looks simple yet classy and upscale and I think that's the theme of the whole car. And when you look at the center it's got very simple and easy to use uh, buttons and display. You get a standard 8 inch screen where with the camera you either get a 7 inch or an 8 inch. This comes standard with 8 inch. It comes standard with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and people are really looking to that now especially younger buyers and that's who they're trying to get into this car. And behind the steering wheel you get a 7 inch TFT screen. That's standard equipment. Now some specifics to this car that are different from the United States. Uh, you get a heated steering wheel that is available in this car, not available in Camry, and heated rear seats which you can't get in Camry either. Now, I'm not here to beat on Toyota Camry, I'm just telling you because these cars have both been introduced into the marketplace literally within months of each other. In the back seat as well you get USB ports uh, for this car so that's a nice feature. The back seat and the seats overall sit lower than the previous previous model. Car's a little bit wider, but the front seats are inboard a little bit, which gives you a little bit more elbow room side to side. But overall, I really like the design. I especially like the conductive charging pad. You get it on the top model, but here's a nice thing. If you want a wireless charging pad for your phone, apparently you can get that installed at the dealer on any trim level. What is different from the older Accords to this one? Well, pretty much everything. The most noticeable for me, though, is just how upmarket this car feels now. And a lot of it comes down to quietness. So yes, you can get luxury features, and this car has every luxury feature you could imagine. But what really sets apart luxury cars from average cars is how quiet they are. And this car certainly feels quiet. It's not a premium brand, but it sure gives you that experience, especially in this touring model. And how they achieve all of this is by doing several things. First of all, uh, the chassis is 32% more rigid. The car is lighter overall. They have lots of sound deadening now, including active noise cancellation, the way you would get with those Bose headphones. There's that at play. They even have things inside the wheel hubs to make them quieter. And it all comes together to give you a much more polished experience. Then you move over to the drivetrain. So it's using a similar engine to the CRV's 1.5 liter turbo four cylinder, but this adds variable valve timing, which just gives you two horsepower more from 190 to 192, but torque is 192 as well, and all thank you very much, Honda, with regular gasoline. So yes, this has a CVT, and I gotta tell you, when I drove the first CRV with the CVT and then the first Accord with the CVT, they weren't refined at all. Now, this marriage is fantastic, to the point where uh, you're hard pressed to even know it's at play. The only time it really shows itself is under hard acceleration, you get that motorboat effect, but other than that, 
Uh, this is a really nice combination. You've got a sport mode, which improves the throttle response and also the sensitivity of the CVT, but it also artificially pumps in a slightly sportier sound through the speakers into the car. And to me, it just makes it droney sounding. So yeah, with the radio on, you might not notice, but you can certainly notice a difference when you have the radio off. Another thing they've changed is the variable steering. So on center, it's quite quick, and then it gets less progressive as you go into the corners to give you uh, more stability at high speed. So all in all, the changes are unbelievable compared to previous Accords. And probably the big question, does it feel a lot different than the Camry? Yes, that's a very polished car as well. Uh, but between the two, this just suits me and my style more, especially the interior. Next up, the two liter that replaced the V6. Now we've been driving the base 1.5 liter most of the day and now we have a shot at the two liter. And one thing I didn't mention when I was talking about the inside, the volume knob is large and beautiful and right there. And thank you Honda for bringing it back. In fact, the more I've been using this head unit, it's different than the other Honda products. It's got tactile buttons. It's got a finish on the screen that doesn't show fingerprints. And I remember driving the Pilot and how shiny it is and it showed everything. This is definitely an improvement. Plus, Honda Sensing, their advanced safety suite is standard on every single Accord. Now, let's get to business with this two liter. You notice right away I'm driving the manual and uh, that's great that they offer that. So the two liter turbo replaces the V6, and it's derived from the Type R engine, detuned, a smaller turbocharger, and it doesn't require premium gas, and it puts out 252 horsepower and 273 pound-feet of torque. And what's the one brand that has the same size engine with the exact same output? Audi. The A4 has a 252 horsepower, two liter, and I said that to the product planners here at Honda Canada, and they said, you know, we didn't mention it in the presentation, but I'm glad that you brought it up. Audi is the brand that they actually benchmark this car against. And I talked about how refined and upscale it feels. And you can feel that similar sort of Audi vibe in this new car. Now, traditionally, V6 was about 10% of the Canadian marketplace. I suspect this two liter will be much higher because there'll be a certain segment of the population wants nothing to do with a CVT and they want an automatic and you get that with this version. You get a brand new 10 speed automatic transmission or you get a manual through the entire record line. There's certainly been a trend in the Canadian marketplace to higher prices. I remember driving a Honda Accord Sport just a few years ago and it was 25 grand. Now the starting price of the base LX is 26 and a half. You want the automatic, it's almost 28,000 for the base model. The Sport now starts at around 30,000 or 31 for the automatic and you can go all the way up to $38,000 for the car that you see here. So Honda and Toyota have kind of gone their separate ways when it comes to power plants. Over at Toyota, they've gone with a regular, normally aspirated four-cylinder and a V6, and you get an eight-speed automatic transmission. Over here at Honda, they've gone to smaller turbocharged four-cylinder with a CVT. Yes, you get a 10-speed automatic with the two-liter, but no V6 is available anymore. So you have to decide if that's a positive or a negative. I personally think the style of this one suits my taste. I really do like the inside, and the driving, as I mentioned, is much more upscale.